Welcome back to Jacket Time TV. I'm Briley McHugh. Next week is National FFA Week, so dress up with these themes to help support FFA. On Monday, we do not have school. And since the beginning of the week is always rough, on Tuesday, dress up as a hobo. You're allowed to wear sweats and hats on this date, but hats must be removed if the teacher says. On Wednesday, wear your favorite team's jersey above high school level. On Thursday, show off your favorite flannel. And on Friday, it's FFA Day. Wear blue and gold. Help support the FFA during National FFA Week by participating in these dress-up themes. with United States Senator James Inhofe at the 2018 AgriFest. So Senator, today you made an announcement about the Wildfire Relief Program. Yeah. What, can you tell us a little bit about yeah, that? It's, it's, it's really going to be good because uh, what we did during that wildfire, I remember flying my plane around on three different occasions, uh, and if we landed and talked to everyone who had anything to do with it, and I'm talking about the Farm Bureau, the, Farm, the, the whole crowd, say, how, what do we need to change so that in the unfortunate event that it comes back and we have another problem? And so we did. One is uh, handling the CRP program, um, where they're going to be able to play a, 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 a bigger part in it. One is allowing the banks to have some relief from regulations so that they can, they can actually go beyond the regulations in, or, in, in, in order to help people out on the ground. And uh, hold on just a minute because I'm forgetting one here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the other one is one of the things I noticed going over the, the, the fence lines. Uh, I mean, there are mm -hmm. hundreds of miles of fence lines, and yet they're not covered. The FEMA is restricted on what they can do, and restricted just actually a dwelling, a household dwelling. Mm -hmm. And this will allow them to do it, uh, to take care of any ag operations in farms as well as their residences. Mm -hmm. So that kind of takes care of all of these problems. And I, a lot of times people introduce things without any idea of whether or not they're gonna get it passed. Mm -hmm. This will pass. Yeah. And I've got a Democrat on the other side of it so that we, uh, that he'll be helping me. He's from New Mexico. And uh, so we'll, we'll get this passed. I believe this will be very beneficial. Thank you for your time. I think it will be. My name is Kylie Pamatiki and I am here with Oklahoma Farm Bureau State Director Keith Kissling. Mr. Kissling, can you give us a few takeaways from the American Farm Bureau Convention? Sure, Kylie. Thank you for inviting me and letting me say a few things. The convention was great. We stayed in a great hotel, as you probably know if you've been there, and the convention hall was huge. There was about 6,000 uh, there. There was 5,000 that got to, uh, to set in on President Trump's talk, his speech. He had quite a bit to say about Oklahoma and what we do in Oklahoma because he talked about the 4-H and the FFA and how important they are to rule Oklahoma. And you all are probably uh, in the FFA and if you are, well, he talked about that quite a bit. He also, the main thing I got from his talk was he is all about federal crop insurance and we were a little afraid that they might mess with federal crop insurance was important to our farmers right now. So we have that assurance now that we're going to have him on our team for federal crop insurance. Also, he talked about all the issues, the, the tax breaks that we're going to get now. Uh, and he said, aren't you glad you voted for me? And so uh, some people liked that, some people didn't. But he's sure on our team. I'm Addison Spicer here with Jim Reese, Oklahoma Secretary of Ag. What are some current events you have been dealing with at this time? Well, we're just getting to the end of 2017, so we're look we're, or 2000, starting 2018. So we're looking back at what we've done in 2017, and just recently, uh, feral hogs is a huge nuisance for the state of Oklahoma, particularly for agriculture, and so it destroys crops. It's you know there's a new study out from LSU talking about the the water quality is being de de degraded from them hanging out in in wet areas. So. Um, when I started in 2011, we were eliminating 11, 3,000 hogs a year. Mm -hmm. And last year we, we uh, eliminated 27,000 hogs. 
in one year, and that's through a variety of ways. Some of them are through USDA's uh, Wildlife Services Program. Some of them are through private helicopter airplane um, hunting. Some of them are through the confined uh, feral hog hunting facilities, and some of them are, are then some of them are eaten. So we try to keep we're trying to keep track of things that are that our agency has had some impact on. Uh, and to help eliminate the feral hog problem. We've got a, still got a long way to go because we still see them expanding into areas that they've never been, uh, but we've created a feral hog free zone, which is the north, mm -hmm. northern border, trying to keep them from going into Kansas. And so, um, you know, we're making progress a lot in policy, mm -hmm. policy um, standards, but not so much in number standards. So we're still working on numbers. Okay, well, I wish you the best of luck and thank you so much for your time. Thank If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't talk. Yeah, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have napped. <laughs> Any more from you, and I'll have to get myself a new dummy. Mr. Hamer, you're wanted! <laughs> is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. Where the past comes back to life Fight you feel for the selfish pain It was worth it every time Thanks for watching Jacket Time TV. See you next time.